Now, in a previous version, we talked about grounding and making impedance measurements. Most people, though, how, don't really understand the difference between resistance and impedance. And you can get two different measurements depending on how you want to measure. So what we're going to do now is we have a, set up a set of simulations where we're going to make a resistance measurement with a DC ohm meter and an impedance measurement with an impedance meter and set up some scenarios that will show you the difference in the measurements that we make. We have two meters to use and we have a simulation box. This is not going to be done on a live circuit, um, but you'll see the differences. So in order to make the measurements, we have a box that has five simulated conditions, A, B, C, D, and E. Here we have two meters, a resistance meter and an impedance meter. This meter, as you can see, is set to ohms. This meter is also set to ohms, which is what the OH sent. So both of these are measuring ohms. So before we get going, we want to make sure the meters are working and get, give us the measurements we need to. Obviously, with the meter leads not touching, we get an overload across the meter and 0.1 ohms. So we can make a wide range of measurements here. Same thing with the impedance meter. Again, this is how it shows an open circuit across the leads and zero ohms. So we're both good to go. So I'm going to make these measurements, and I'm going to make four measurements at each se section. I'm going to make a measurement, reverse the polarity, then take the impedance measure, do the same measurements. We'll see the results, and then we'll figure out what we tried to simulate. So the first measurement to ground to A, and it's overload. So that means it's higher than the meter can read. And I'll reverse it real quick. And it doesn't change. Now with the impedance meter, still an overload condition. And still in an overload condition. In this case, there's an open. So both meters are measuring correctly an open circuit. Now we're going to move to measurement B. And about 100 ohms. We'll just reverse it. Now we get the same measurement, about 100 ohms. Let's see what the impedance meter is giving us. And that's giving us 100 ohms also. And again, 100 ohms in both polarities. What this is actually simulating in here is some sort of an oxide condition that's given us a high resistance reading, higher than we want. Since it's both resistance and not impedance that's making the measurement, they both show the same thing. So let's move on to C. And we get one ohm here. Reverse it. Still about one ohm, 1.1. 1 .1. Impedance measurement. What do we have here? Different measurement. About 35. I'll repeat that. And about 35. So what's the difference here? We have an impedance measurement of 35 and a resistance measurement of 1 ohm. Well, again, what's happened in here, there's a simulation here of actually a coiled cord. A coiled cord acts like an inductor. An inductor does have a impedance associated with it, but it doesn't have resistance associated with it. So the meter, the resistance meter, cannot pick up an impedance load on a circuit, whereas the impedance meter can. Let's move on to the next one, which is D. About 168 ohms versus a minus 148 ohms. Interesting measurement. Let's see what the impedance measure gives us. Uh, 
peanut measurement 10 ohms. Inverse it. 10 ohms. Interesting measurement here. So what is that an indication of? Well, we already know that you cannot have a negative resistance. It just doesn't exist. But these meters are not that smart. The way they work is they put a little voltage on it and they measure the current and they calculate the resistance. Obviously, there's something going on on this particular circuit that has a voltage on it that's causing this meter to miscalculate. So you can't have the negative resistance at all. The impedance measurement is a little bit different. It's done at a frequency. So it doesn't care about a DC voltage on there. In fact, it just reads through it. This is probably the proper measurement to make. It's probably 10 ohms. It doesn't take into account any voltage that's on there. Often you'll see people trying to make a measurement on the factory floor and you'll get a negative resistance. When you see a negative resistance, it indicates you have noise on your ground line. It's not necessarily bad, but you will not be able to measure the impedance to ground if that condition exists. So let's go and do the next and final measurement, E. Looks about one mega ohm. And there's one mega ohm that way. Let's do the impedance measurement. And this is recording an over range condition. That could simply be because the high end for this particular meter is about one mega ohm. So it's over range for this meter. So one mega ohm is probably right. It's a straight resistance meter. In any case, it's way too high to use for a grounding measurement. So those are the simulations and you can see the differences. If you want to measure, the important thing to take, if you want to measure impedance, use an impedance measurement device. Don't use a resistance measurement device. This can give you some false numbers and false positives. Uh, this will measure the actual impedance and take into account any voltages on the line or any true impedance that's on the line.